Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome, uh, welcome to you all. Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome you to the University of Canterbury and specifically to the School of Law. My name is Richard Scragg. I'm the Dean of the Faculty of Law and the Head of the School of Law, which means I'm the chap who's uh, in charge of things in law. And uh, those of you who are first-year students, and uh, that I'm sure is the majority of you, the vast majority, will be seeing something of me in lectures this year. There are various people uh, I would like to introduce uh, to you. Uh, and from the School of Law, could I ask our administrators just to come up to the, uh, the front, please? There are actually four administrators in the School of Law. Uh, one is not with us today, that is Ariana Wettery. But uh, all of our administrators are people you are likely to have dealings with over the course of the year. Uh, and uh, immediately next to me is Fiona uh, Saunders. Uh, she, she's a bit more back room, I think, for most of you than, than the others. But next to her is Heather Couch, our academic administrator. Uh, and it's very likely you'll have contact with her. I might say that if you are a person who uh, needs uh, any special facilities in terms of um, health, physical, mental well-being, uh, it is Heather who... Uh, looks after the, the question of um, support in that way for students. And then Mary Boyd, whom you will probably all meet over the course of the year. Mary uh, is on our uh, reception desk and has a range of duties that she performs from there. Uh, and Ariana, when she is with us, is on that desk as well. So these are people uh, you need to get to know. Uh, I strongly advise you to treat them well because they are people who um, have considerable influence over your uh, daily lives. So thank you all three. You, you may retire <laughs> on that note. Now we don't... Uh, no, we don't, I, I was hoping well, we may yet have some representatives from the Students' Law Society uh, here, but they're, they're not currently, um, obviously, uh, present. May I just introduce also our Senior Tutor and Academic Manager. Uh, Simon Dorset uh, is our Senior Tutor. He uh, is engaged in giving student advice and uh, again, as you look ahead and plan your degrees, your future courses of study, he is a person you will have dealings with. And uh, Margaret Ricketts is the School of Law's academic manager. She too, in that capacity, of course, gives student advice. And uh, many and possibly all of you will meet her and she will also assist you with degree planning. And problems, problems over enrolment, problems with uh, uh, the technical side of courses and so on. Technical relative to using computer systems and the like. So Margaret uh, and Simon are two very significant people. Thank you for that. We do have in the School of Law an undergraduate handbook uh, and these are not back to us from the printers yet but they will be distributed in lectures to you once we receive them and you should read the handbook. This is the School of Law's undergraduate handbook. You should read it uh, and familiarise yourselves very, very fully with its contents. It's full of extremely helpful material. Probably just about all the questions you will want to ask any of us are all answered in that book. Now that's not to put you off coming and asking staff. Uh, if, you're, if you've read the book and you still can't quite find what you want, it's not clear to you, then of course come forward uh, and we'll be pleased to help you out. Now, um, in terms of the audience today, as you're aware, these functions uh, are geared to students who are new to the university uh, studying law. That means, of course, that most of you are first-year students, but I am conscious there are people here who are not first-years. There are people uh, who will have transferred in. 
uh, from other universities at second, third, fourth, fifth year, and so on. Uh, my comments are geared largely to first year students, but so that's because, of course, those others are much more experienced in terms of their study habits, uh, coming to grips with law as an academic discipline. Now I say to you that, that um, embarking uh, upon the study of law, you are really embarking upon a whole new way of life. That won't be apparent to you as you, you sit out there today, uh, and you may well sit there wondering whatever I'm talking about. But that is the reality, that law is more than just another academic subject. It involves a whole way of thinking, a whole way of conducting yourself. Uh, and those of you who take well to that will go on and succeed uh, and take your place in society, whether as practicing lawyers or in some other activity. Because law is a community and it has very, very many branches. Once you come to the ends of your degrees, and, and not even then, do pass it now, well before the end, uh, you'll know exactly what I mean in terms of what I'm saying today. One of the things that I would encourage all of you to do at the earliest opportunity, that is to say starting next week, uh, is to familiarise yourselves with the Law Library. The Law Library is located in the School of Law building. Uh, the library there comprises both the Law and Commerce collections. And you should familiarise yourself with the law collection at the earliest opportunity. And that includes, of course, coming to grips with using electronic databases. Now, you will find that the librarians themselves run sessions to train you in library use. And I urge all of you to put your names forward for those sessions. The library uh, is really something of a laboratory for law students. The law building is very much a home to law students. And what you tend to find is that law students live in the library. They get to a desk in the morning, they put their things down, and they're there all day, often uh, well into the night as well, of course. And you need, to, you need to be familiar with how to use that particular facility. One of the uh, questions that uh, is frequently put to me by students who are new to law is what is the formula for success? How do you succeed as a law student? Uh, and there's a very simple answer to that, and it's a one-word answer, and it is simply commitment. And those of you who have a, a sense of commitment to what you're doing, you are indeed committed to it, you're applying yourselves to what you're doing, you are the people who will succeed. Uh, in practical terms, what does this mean? Well, it means you've got to do the work. And to that end, you need to uh, attend lectures, you need to attend and participate in tutorials and workshops. You need to undertake the exercises that are set. You need to sit the tests, write the essays, and so on. Uh, if you do the work, you will succeed. And doing the work is the badge of your commitment to what you are doing. Academic success uh, in any discipline involves both teaching and learning. Now, uh, as far as we on the staff are concerned, we will certainly undertake the teaching. But the learning is your job. Nobody can learn for you. You have to do that. And it's that combination of teaching and learning, the meeting of the two, that produces academic success. Uh, I would encourage everybody here as they embark on their law studies to have an open mind. Probably law as a, an academic discipline is not what you think it is uh, and you're going to find it is something very different. The reality is that uh, you may find as you begin your year's work that you don't do very well 
that's, that's common. But don't be put off by that. Don't be alarmed by it. Treat the results you get back and the feedback that accompanies them as a learning experience. If you find that uh, you're doing very badly and your response is simply to throw up your hands in horror and say, I can't do this, then you won't get anywhere. You're actually right, you know, you, you can't do it and you never will because you're not trying. Uh, what I encourage all of you to do when you are confronted with difficulty and you find yourself struggling, what I encourage you to do is to engage with the difficulty. And it's the student who engages with the difficulty who will go on to do very, very well. The one who throws their hands up won't go anywhere, but the one who engages will get there. You have to realise that law, in terms of its method, its thinking, its actual practical application, is not intuitive. Nobody is born with the skills that we require in terms of legal reasoning. This goes right across the board with case analysis, statutory interpretation, every aspect of legal reason. These are skills that have to be learnt, and any intelligent person can learn them, but they're not intuitive. So you have to start really with a blank sheet and work from there to grasp what these skills are. The responsibility uh, for doing that is on you. We can't do the learning for you. The staff can only assist you, can facilitate things, but the actual learning must be done by you. And the task before you is to convert your lecturer's knowledge into your own knowledge. Just as I speak to you now, uh, I'm speaking to you in terms of my own knowledge. All you are doing is receiving information. And information as information is largely useless. It's only when you convert information into knowledge that it has any meaning. And that's the job before all of you over the course of this year. Now, uh, there will be perhaps people here today who are going into the Laws 200 subjects. Uh, when you get to the end of your first year of law with Laws 101 and Laws 110, you are, of course, then up for a competitive entry selection for Laws 200. And so you've got to achieve well to go on to Laws 200. This is something I'll talk to you about much later in the year as we, we come to the end of the year so you're clear about what you've uh, got to do. But may I say to those people here today who are in, in Laws 200 but are joining this university for the first time, uh, simply don't be complacent. Don't be complacent. Uh, if you've got into Laws 200 at your other university you've done very, very well and congratulations to you. But don't now ease back. Keep going. Keep going with the same sort of effort to ensure you stay in Laws 200. Uh, in terms of people who are at Laws 300 levels who are new to us, well, I don't think there's anything I can really say to you. You're obviously doing very well. You've got there. Whatever it is you're doing works, so just keep doing it and uh, all the best to you. Now, may I say, I observe here that we've got two... Uh, distinguished representatives of Law Sock, and uh, may I invite down, down to the front if you would please, our President uh, Seamus Woods, uh, accompanied by Rachel Walsh, one of his executive, and uh, would, shall I hand over to you? I've got a microphone here. Oh, I should, should be right to you. you should, you're okay. Yeah. Okay, you go. Thank you very much, Mr. Scrooge. Ladies and gentlemen, you've just heard a very famous speech from a very famous man. <laughs> uh, this is a speech that will stay with you. A few of those lines will stick with you for uh, the rest of your time at law school. Uh, put your hands up if you can hear me. I might be Phil. Phil, man. Need the microphone. Need the microphone. Hey, yeah. Why not? Yeah. That, not loud enough. That one's come a bit loose. So. Oh, that's right. Ra Rachel, that's not, not legible. How, how, how do I sound? <laughs> How's that? 
everyone hear me? Oh, that sounds good. That's a good baritone coming through. Yes, very nice. Well, kia ora everyone. My name's Seamus. I'm the president of the Law Student Society Law Sock, which Rachel has kindly written up on the see. board. Which, which you can't really see because it's a rubbish pen. But um, that's right, well-stocked university. Great, um, great resources. Um, so, um, so yeah, my name is Seamus and Rachel. Um, so look for our faces around the university. We're part of the Law Student Society. So Professor Scragg asked us um, if we wanted to come and expose ourselves to a bunch of children. Um, Not so. my words. <laughs> uh, it's, there, was, there was a gag that could have gone one of two ways and it had a very lukewarm response. So I'm, I'll, I'll be pleased to report that back to the crew uh, when, we, when we developed it. Oh, people will love it. And then some people will hate it. Um, well, I know. So what is law sock? Well, have you heard about all these socks? There's a lot of socks around. For those of you new to the University of Canterbury, I remember when I was in your position, there were just socks everywhere. There's just socks, Simon. Socks. I, I want that back. They're, they're actually my woolies. They're quite warm in the winter. Um, but they're just a prop for today. So we just, a whole lot of socks. Have you guys been, have you guys come across all the socks yet? Rock sock, mu sock, band sock, in sock. You guys are getting socks? Socks coming out your ears. Well, we're law sock. And um, that's the one to remember, to be honest, because you guys are going to be our first year law students and we are the society dedicated to looking after law students. So we've got members at all levels and we're really keen to pick you guys up um, to come and join as members. Why should you join as a member? I hear you asking. Now that I've warmed you up with my gags, I've a raging crowd. Um, why should you join? Well, firstly, as a first year, it can be quite daunting coming to university. Who's kind of a little bit daunted? Hands up, especially after Professor Scragg's speech. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, well, if you're a little bit daunted, and even if you're not, and you're just looking for someone who can show you where the printers are and what printer goes where and where books are in the library and what cafe does the best coffee, you need someone who you can go to who's been here for a few years, right? So that's where you need your... Buddy. And so if you're a first year student and you join up to LawSoc, we pair you up with a older student, um, like one of us, not that we're old, but um, we pair you up with one of us and you can come and talk to us anytime and go and get, get out for coffee with them and they'll show you, they'll walk your timid little hands through the doors of the law school and the university, um, which is great. The other thing that LawSoc does is that we put on tutorials throughout the year, so if when it comes up to these big scary tests, which you've just been told you won't do very well in at first, if you want to nail them, then you come along and see us. So LawSoc puts on tutorials um, throughout the year for your exams and tests, and we'll do uh, an essay workshop possibly. Um, so join up to LawSoc and you will get um, pretty mean academic help from myself uh, and our education officer, Andy Luck. Um, and also, university isn't all about academic work, and uh, this, is, this is a famous speech as well, I'm gonna, gonna let you in on. Um, LawSoc isn't all about, uh, I mean, university isn't all about just doing work. <laughs> um, <laughs> that was the grossest little laugh. Um, <laughs> Um, just do it again. Um, so look, uni is also about having fun and LawSoc um, puts on a massive social calendar which we encourage everyone to come along to. So if you're a member of LawSoc we have things like the ball and a quiz night, um, all sorts of things throughout the year, barbecues out on the fields that will keep you uh, going, keep wetting your appetite for social events, if you will. Um, so there's a million reasons to join LawSoc. You can come and find us in room 119. Our sign-up days are with all the clubs. You might have heard about Clubs Day, or you see it, you'll certainly see it around, uh, on next Thursday and Friday. Next Thursday and Friday, just out here. So come and find the LawSoc tent. We'll be there. Come and find our pretty faces, and, um, and we will sort you out with the membership. And then any time you want to come and chat, uh, want, want to ask a question or something, come along to room 119 and someone will be there and sort you out. Sound good? What we're going to do is, we've just got back from Hammer actually, our, Rachel and I and our, um, our LawSoc team have just done a, a team building exercise in Hammer, and um, there's one pretty rank little Mars bar left over, <laughs> which I'm sure anyone would love to get their hands on. I was going to say one of the boys, but you never know. Girls like rank mass bars. <laughs> right? <laughs> right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run around like crazy. Uh, once I'm going to get someone to put their hand up, and the first person that puts their hand up and can tell me 
answer two questions I'm going to ask you about law sock. We'll get the rank Mars bar. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm in pole position. Rachel can scrutinise, so can Professor Scrag. Who's going to have their hand up first? In three, two. <laughs> He's gone early. Three, two, one. Well done, you. You like rank Mars bars? Free chocolate. Oh, you're going to have to get on the mic so that everyone can do the details. My first question for you. What's your name? Nevi. Nevi. Welcome aboard, Nevi. Okay, that's the first question. The second question is, what is the name of the society that you are going to join next Thursday and Friday? Lawsock. Say it again. Lawsock. Lawsock! Woo! Congratulations. Big round of applause for Nevi. Thank you very much for listening to that. I'll hand back over. I'll hand back over now to the capable hands of Professor Craig. <laughs> and um, thank, you, thank you very much. And thank I'll get my sock back. Thanks very much. Well, thank you, Seamus and Rachel, for that uh, stunning, stunning um, presentation, which I'm sure will bring in vast numbers of people to NSOC. So there we are. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thank you very much. Yes. I'm the lucky one in that case. <laughs> well, I don't, uh, I don't intend going on uh, today at all about any logistical matters with the practicalities of your first year law courses. Lectures start uh, next week. Uh, as I hope you are all now fully enrolled, but make sure you get that completed if you haven't done so. And have a look at the course information service on the computer for the University of Canterbury. Compu the, the course information service for both of the legal system courses, Laws 101 and 110. They are both compulsory courses and you need to pass them both uh, as a minimum requirement for going on to Laws 200 and of course as you'll, you'll see as the year goes on you need to pass them uh, with a healthy margin to be considered for selection for Laws 200. The course supervisor of each of those courses is Dr Deborah Wilson and she will be talking to you about practicalities directed to the precise courses uh, when she commences lectures in Laws 101 next week. So she will talk about first year law in Laws 101. Now before I conclude, Margaret, would you like to talk about matters of, of practicality, housekeeping, etc.? I'll hand over to Margaret Ricketts, you'll remember our academic manager in the School of Law. Right, thank you. Okay, can people hear? Yeah. Okay, um, I've just got a few brief um, housekeeping type uh, bits of information for you. Um, as Richard indicated, for course and advice and degree planning, you can come and see either Mr Dorset, our senior tutor, uh, or myself by making an appointment through Mary, whom you met earlier, uh, level five reception. Um, just a few other items that are quite important to you when you've, you're starting at Canterbury. You will have got a copy of the 2012 Guide to Enrolment. Now, there's a lot of material on there, but be particularly aware of page five because the dates are on there when you can get out of a course. Uh, you'll see there's an earlier date when you can drop a course and get a refund. There's a later date if you want to drop a course and still be able to drop the course without getting a fail grade. And the reason we warn people about that is that it's very important to drop courses formally through the university system if you do need to discontinue any course. Um, if you just walk away and forget, then you end up with fail grades on your transcript because the university thinks that you just haven't been attending. They don't know that you've discontinued the course. So I just want to stress to everybody, like I do every year, please read these dates and keep them at the, foremost of, uh, the forefront of your mind so you know when you can make course changes throughout the year. We also urge people and every 
piece of university documentation that you read from student services will emphasise this as well, to check your UC Live email daily because the university uses your UC Live email for all sorts of important information. It's really, really important. Once that's sent out, we consider you've been notified, so do keep an eye on the email. Um, I just wondered if people would mind raising their hands if they're doing a double degree. Right, good. <laughs> the reason I'm asking is that um, for your other degree, you will get student advice in terms of course and degree planning from the other college. So, for example, if you're doing a BA, LLB, and you want to know how you're going with your arts degree planning, then you go and see the student advisors in the College of Arts. Yes, yeah, good point. Um, just check your enrolment and make sure that you are in fact enrolled in both degrees. Sometimes people might, for example, just enrol in the BA in first year, but they're doing Laws 101 and 110. It makes it easier for the university's statistical collection if you do show yourself as being enrolled in both degrees, BA, LLB, or, or whatever. It's not just the courses, you've got a mm. code now. It's your, your degree, your, they'll call it your degree code in the course system. Um, that's about it. Just a couple of other important things is that um, you're probably, I'm not sure what other orientation you're getting from other sections of the university during O week, but uh, the Learning Skills Centre is a very important place for new students. It's um, 77 Clyde Road and the Learning Skills Centre can give you all sorts of information about how to write essays, how to prepare for exams, and this year they've got a new course called Demystifying the University System, which I could probably do with attending as well, actually. Um, it says it covers all the inside knowledge needed to make a smooth transition to tertiary studies, so that sounds like it could be quite useful. Um, also, in the Rutherford building, we have student support, and they apply all sorts of pastoral care and advice on a whole raft of things, so student support in the Rutherford building, and I'm sure you will get information from various sources during orientation week about these services. In addition, we have Te Putariki, the Māori Law Student Society, and they'll have a pretty big presence. Shames, do they have a desk next week as well? Yeah, I think so. yeah, outside the law school. Um, there's also Pacific Student Support that you can contact through student services. And I think that covers all of the reminders I just wanted to give you today. So welcome to Canterbury. It's really nice to see you all here and I hope it all goes well. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now, um I don't want to say anything further to you today other than to, to wish you all very well in your careers at the University of Canterbury, whether uh, you continue with law or go off with other degrees. But before we do close, I'm very happy to answer any questions you may have. Equally, Margaret Ricketts, Simon Dorset, and I might hazard a guess also Seamus and Rachel would be happy to uh, answer any questions relative to their areas. So are there, are there any questions that uh, uh, people wish to raise? Yes. Aha, now, Margaret, do you want to comment on that? Tutorials, I understand they're being allocated by the usual timetable system, which is still going through, still being processed. Here we are. You'll certainly get information about them in the first lectures for your... Oh. <laughs> You'll certainly get information in the first lectures for Laws 110 and 101 about individual tutes, but um, you will be automatically put, I think, into tute groups via the new system, but I'm a little bit unsure of that, so listen very carefully in the first Laws 101 and 110 lectures next week. And of course make sure you know where, where your 101 and 110 lectures are, rooms, and uh, do go along well in advance of the, the lecture times. Go the day before as far as you can, just find out where the rooms are. Some of them are quite well spread out around the university. Yeah. Other questions? Yes? Is there a specific grade average you need to Actually, no, um, and that's because um, 
Well, let me explain a little bit about the system to you. I mean, obviously, you've got to do, you've got to have a superior performance, but it's competitive. So the reality is that as you all sit here today, every single person here is dependent on whether or not they'll get into Laws 200 on the performance of everybody else in the room. So uh, approximately, uh, a, a little over 200 actually, go from legal system into Laws 200 every year. Uh, it's a f it, that works on a formula basis. Now, um, uh, if we have, and I'm sure we have here, a brilliant uh, gathering of people, so everybody's going to get grades in the A range, then to go on to Laws 200 you're going to have to be in the A range. Uh, that has never happened, I might say, in the history of the university, which would go right back to 1873 in this respect. But um, the, the uh, reality is that uh, you are dependent on everybody else, so it does move around a little. Now, it's quite clear that anybody who can uh, achieve at the level of B plus and above in first year law is doing outstandingly well. We look at your non-laws courses as well, I might say, but a uh, person who gets B plus and above in first year law is usually doing exactly the same in all the others. Um, as you go down to B, then yes, that's depending on how well the others have done, that's all right. But it's really B and above that is the comfort zone in first year law subjects. Now you may drop below a B, you may drop down to a B minus, uh, or even lower, uh, and that's not comfortable. That's not comfortable. So the task for you and for everybody here today uh, is to aim as high as they possibly can and really sort out for yourselves what's required to go on. Because it is those, those top 200 who apply who will be offered the places. That's, that's the reality. Other questions? Yes? So I'm a little confused about the timetables. Uh, is it, are all the courses auto allocated or teachers some Like, is it straightness? Uh, at this stage, I think automatically allocated is, is right, isn't it, for both strains? Yeah, yeah. Because there, there should be no clashes. It's been geared to avoiding that. No, no, no. The difficulty is that the classes are allocated uh, relative to the numbers of students, so that the, 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 it, it's a question of room size. Uh, it is actually a breach of the health and safety legislation for somebody not to sit in a seat in a lecture theatre, to sit on, on, you know, on the floor at the top there or down here or up the stairs. So uh, if everybody all turns up to one session, you've got an immediate problem because the lecturer's obligation is immediately to cancel the lecture. So you've got to stick in your stick to the group you're allocated to. Other questions? All right, well, if there is nothing else, may I wish you all very, very well for the year. Uh, we'll be seeing plenty of you over the year, and all the best with all your studies.